What is Poppleti Squad, bitch? <laughs> I just got my whole motherfucking entire life. It is so good to see a bitch be vindicated. I have not seen a read that well delivered. I can't even think back when a bitch read another bitch that well. OG crucified Evelyn in this fucking episode. I mean, she gathered her so neatly and tied that shit in a bow. She reminded me a lot of myself. I think that's why I'm so proud because if I ever did a reality show, that's how I would give it to a bitch. Ooh, what? that was a read for all reads. I think the last, I think the only thing that could pop in my head, a bitch sizzling somebody that good was when Claudia was on Real Housewives of Atlanta and that table scene between her and Nene and she was talking about how Nene her was ate up in the back. <laughs> That's why she didn't come back because she ate her ass up so well. I think that was the last time I seen a, another woman read another bitch that deserved it so well. OG bitch, I'm so proud of you, bitch. I am so motherfucking proud of you. But before we get into tonight's episode, because it's going to be a long video once again, so get you something to drink, get you some popcorn, get you some McDonald's or something, bitch, um, and get back, get ready to sit back and relax, grab your glass of wine, honey. I got some behind the scenes here before we get off into tonight's review. So it has been um, clarified that basketball wise will be back for season nine. Oh God, Jesus, the offense. Um, also, uh, they're working on a basketball wise Dallas. Now the gag is apparently Tammy was the one that came to Shawnee with the show concept and with a full cast already prepared for a basketball wise Houston. She was supposed to have an executive producer credit. I also just heard today though that, I don't know if this is true or not, because I saw this on another YouTuber's uh, channels, but I haven't seen this on the blogs or anything like that. So I don't know if this part of the tea is true or not, but that she and Shiny had a falling out because something happened with the Basketball Wives Houston and now they're doing Basketball Wives Dallas and she's not going to get the producer credit that she was supposed to have and that's the reason why her and Shiny have all the way fallen off and fallen, fallen out and why she has unfollowed her now I don't like I said I don't know if that's true or not but I can see it happen because you know Shiny ass is a snake um how do you all feel about the basketball wives Dallas oh god more bitches um Cece also posted on Twitter um, somehow production lost footage of the real tumble, but we knew that would happen. Hashtag tumbleweed. So actually, so she's saying we did not see the full scope of what happened with Evelyn falling. Um, uh, 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 Takari, Jackie's daughter, tweeted, um, read her next one. She got two out. Thanks, mom. When Jackie said that to Phoebe, when she was like about your daughter book, she was like, she actually got two more coming. You need to read that one. So she thanked her mama. Seems like things are going good between them. I'm happy to know that. We also saw on tonight's episode that, uh, all of a sudden now Evelyn is Afro-Latina. We ain't never heard this bitch per, 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 I can't even say it, refer to herself as Afro-Latina. In the 15 damn years we've seen her ass on television, she has always gone just by Puerto Rican, but now I can say she done seen a Mara La Negra ass on Love and Hip Hop um, Miami. Now all of a sudden she Afro Latina, so she can get away. So she thinks she can get away with saying the N word because she know people been calling her ass out for that shit and she want to keep on saying it, but we ain't having it and we gonna hold her ass to the motherfucking cross. Um, so uh, she was saying, I thought it was obvious. I mean, I am from New York. I am from the Bronx. What the fuck does you being from the Bronx and Bronx and New York got to do with you calling yourself Afro the fuck Latina? You can look at your family and tell ain't nothing Afro or about y'all asses. Y'all a full Latina, bitch. Um, ain't now one of y'all got a kink in that damn hair or any melanin to y'all goddamn skin because you know she tans. Um, but I mean, and not to sound like ignorant or anything like that like um 
Latino people don't have black ancestry in their black, you know, blood in their ancestry because we all do. But that ain't got nothing to do with her ass calling niggas and nigga this and nigga that every fucking five minutes. Um, because like we've said, she is never gone by fucking Afro Latina a day in her fucking life. I don't even think she know what the fuck Afro Latina mean. If you probably asked her, she wouldn't know what the fuck she was talking about. Um, this is like me um, saying I'm white because I got white in my DNA. Girl, get the fuck out of here. As you can see, I am black. Um, so Tammy tweeted today, Jazz broke the heel on my favorite lose. And I said, girl, I'm going to kill you when I see you. Translation, if I put my hands on you, you're going to be fucked up. Guess I better watch that because people really out here making it seem like people going to kill another person. Shaking my head at our heart OG. Come through, come through, Tammy. Tammy has played the background um, this whole season, but I love that she has come through in the clutch to have OGs back in the call, shiny in them ass out on a bullshit. Um, also tonight um, and this past week, OG has been coming with the receipts left and right about Chad. She got one of Chad's tweets where he um, posted a, a video of one of her football games. And in the clip, you see OG twerking on somebody's head and you see three other women in the video footage. And he said, four of my exes in this video. He tweeted that, four of my exes in this video. OG is one of the four in that video. Mm -hmm. um, she also posted the direct messages showing that Chad was hitting her up um, as well on um, Twitter DMs. He was reaching out to her. It just was not one-sided. Uh, what else? Then tonight, she said, why didn't you read this part, Egghead? Because last year, they wanted me to talk about his ass, and I said no. So we see a text message conversation between her and Ocho, allegedly. And he said, you ain't getting me in trouble with your dude. And she said, uh, send it. And then it says, I need to talk to you about something. And then he say, what's up? Just tell me. And she said, it has to do with your ex. I pretty much just said you're a good dude and didn't want to comment on the situation. Then she shows text messages between her and Chad from 2011 when she was single. And he said, okay, you are fine. How old, or how old are you? But it says, how, how old ate you? She says, thank you, I'm 26. He say, boyfriend. She say, nope, what about yourself? And he say, well, I do deal with someone, but we can be BFFs. I know that had to have eaten Evelyn the fuck up when she heard that nigga say, I'm dealing with somebody. He ain't even call you his fucking girl. He ain't even call you his fiance. He said he was dealing with somebody. <laughs> Guess my pussy wasn't that good after all. So then we see another one where he says, you're fresh. I want more pictures. You look good. And then she say, ha, 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 you're funny. He sends her a screenshot of himself. She sends him a picture back. And he's, um, she says, nice to his. And then he sends her this photo of him naked. And he says, um, I'll call you in a minute. And he say, bye, girl. Um, so and then she said, so who's the nine motherfucking factor now, bitch? Girl, Evelyn, go play in traffic, bitch, because your whole existence is non-existent. Okay, but let's get into tonight's episode, bitch. Also, I wanted to point out, too, the part when Evelyn had the bamboo stick, she didn't originally have a bamboo stick in her hand. And originally, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think she just had the leaf. But when she fell into the bushes, if you go back and look, you see her scrambling and grabbing some stuff. It wasn't just the leaf. At that point, I think that's when she grabbed a bamboo stick and tried to cover it with the leaf so she can go and hit Cece again. But she did have a fucking bamboo stick and was geared to try to hit that girl with it. But sitting up here talking about, I wasn't going to attack her. And then Shiny co-signing the shit because she's trying to stick up for her friend so her friend won't fucking get in trouble. You two lousy, big no bitches. I can't stand neither one of them fucking help us we don't get into that into this read so we pick up where we left off with billy d and her saggy ass titties hollering and crying about sissy is the one that did this to me my, my, um, my father-in-law she's the one that did this to me it's her fault he doesn't like me Kizzy. oh god um jackie tries to console her then leaves and goes with the other girls billy d says that she's done 
as OG is heard saying to flat screen, flat screen, by the way, is Evelyn because of her big ass forehead. She says, keep your footing, you dirty ass bitch. Um, I'm trying to, I got a typo here. What would I meant to say? I don't know what I, I got the type of wrong, wrong. But anyway, she says, bitch, what the fuck do you think Evelyn is doing? Malaysia is doing? Phoebe is doing? Y'all dumbass bitches. And I love the fact that she called all of them some dumbass bitches and made sure that Shiny could fucking hurt her. And you see Shiny them didn't say shit. They sat there like, she talked to, she talked to me because I ain't saying that back. I ain't heard that. Did y'all hear that? So Master Splinter, her confessional, Master Splinter, if you don't know, is shiny ass, says Evelyn was wrong, but it's always a but when it comes to her ugly ass friend. Says, but OG's aggression never goes away. Shiny say to the girl, she like, she, she act like she wanted to fight everyone. Then flat screen say, she bum rushed me like she was in a football game. I could be what she called me, but I know what I bring to the table. So I'm not afraid to eat alone, bitch. But I was like, you whispering. <laughs> like, why you ain't saying that shit out loud? Why you ain't making sure she heard that shit? Call her bitch out loud, Evelyn. Raise your voice. You said that shit so motherfucking soft because you ain't want no motherfucking smoke. You ain't want to catch that motherfucking fade. You ain't want them hands, my nigga. Shut your weak ass up. So, Evelyn and her confession say, OG doesn't care that Chad was indicted. She, he doesn't care that he was my abuser. Bitch, you don't motherfucking credit that nigga was your abuser. You mad that you let that nigga go. It, that bitch still want that nigga. That's why she still so butthurt. She still love that nigga. So, Cece says she was gonna take the twig and try to whip me with it while Kristen was trying to talk to me. And her confessional, Cece say, how could I talk to Kristen if Evelyn was behind her trying to attack me on the sideline? Does Shani not see that? That was the only reason why OG was there. Shani know what the fuck she doing. Shani know that Evelyn Evelyn was wrong. Shiny knows that Evelyn is the problem. Shiny knows that she's uh, the turn up queen and she's the aggressor. But because she doesn't like OG and because she doesn't want OG on the show and because they can't railroad OG and they can't play mind control with her and they can't belittle her and they can't bully her, she wants her off the show and she's going to continue to have her besties back because that's her friend. So Evelyn, I mean, Shani know exactly what the fuck she doing. She's playing devil's advocate. She's playing dumb. She knows exactly what she's doing. But I got a message for her ass at the end. No, I'm going to say it right now. Neither one of these hoes have learned their fucking lesson. And I feel sorry for both of them because God going to spank their asses in ways that they have never even imagined. Now, see, Shani going to get her shit back again. Because remember around 2011, 2000, yeah, 2011, when they asses got fucking canceled for being bullies, for um, all the fighting and all the fighting against the women and Star Jones called they asses out and it was petition to get the show canceled and they got fucking canceled and they got taken off the air because of all the toxicity that they were doing back then. And then that's when they waited a minute and they came with Basketball Wives fucking LA. The same thing is going to happen to your ass again, bitch, because you didn't learn from the first time and you're sitting up here repeating the same fucked up cycle that you did years ago. This shit is going to get taken away from you, but this time it's going to be even worse because now we're living in a, a, in a state where you can't be politically incorrect anymore. You can't be colorist. You can't be bullying other people on television. You can't be saying the N-word and you're not black and thinking that you're not going to suffer from the ramifications of that. So Shiny going to get her just due with this shit that she's pulling all over again. She's going to get the rug pulled underneath her and this damn franchise that she has worked so hard for is going to get taken from away from her. And the next time it's getting taken away from her ass, it's not going to be able to come back. And see, with Evelyn as Evelyn ain't learned shit. She didn't learn shit when she had her first rock bottom moment when her and Chad fought each other. And I said it then and I'm going to say it now. That nigga just didn't crack her in her forehead for no motherfucking reason. They were in that, that car fighting each other. I said it then and I will say it now. That bitch wasn't no weakling sitting up there getting abused. They was fighting each other like Chris Brown and Rihanna was over there fighting each other. Not to say that the shit means it's okay for a nigga to put his hands on you. But that bitch wasn't no shrinking violent. That bitch was over there fighting that nigga. That's why she regrets it 
all these years later that they're no longer together because she made a rushed decision and left that nigga and she regret that shit. She loved that nigga. She loved that motherfucker. And I'm going to tell you how she loved that motherfucker and why she loved that motherfucker. She don't even talk about her damn son's dad. You'll never hear her bring up Carl. You don't even see her bring up um Shani, uh, Shani's daddy. You don't even see her bring up the nigga that she was with when she came on this show. She loved Chad Dirty Draws. He is the motherfucker that got away. That's why he's still her storyline 10 years the fuck later. That's why you bring up that nigga, it's a trigger for her because she butt hurt because she left and she mad that she left that nigga. She 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 wishes she would have never did what she did. She wishes she would have never left that nigga if she could have it. If she could go back to him right now and people wouldn't tell her she was stupid for the shit, she'd go back with his ass right about now. But she gonna have another rock bottom, a rock bottom moment because she doing the same shit that she did years ago with this bullying shit, with her, uh, the the uh, the mean girl shit, and the next time God pull the rug up underneath her ass, it's gonna be way worse than when you got cracked in your skull, bitch. Some bad shit gonna happen to that girl. And I feel sorry for her because she ain't learned a motherfucking lesson. So her and Shiny little light-skinned ass got some shit coming towards them. But back to my review, because we already 15 minutes into this motherfucker. And I ain't even got nowhere. Um, so, uh, Cece and her confessional say, no, I already said that part. Uh, Cece said she is done talking to Christian, annoying ass, and I don't blame her. Shiny say, I'm mad at OG. She fucked this whole moment up. What? Okay, girl. Um, Shiny tells the girls that she wants to tell OG whenever she's around things escalate and that there and that every situation is not her business. Let that marinate into your soul. Then sink on in. Yeah. We're living in an alternate motherfucking universe. This show is like being in a motherfucking matrix. You don't know if you took the red pill or the blue pill, motherfucker. So Shiny's steady using the word aggressive to describe this trip. I'm like, bitch, do you know any word, another big word? Because you know that's the, probably a big word for, for Shiny ass. Aggressive. Aggression. Aggressive. Like, bitch, there's other ways to describe it. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? If this bitch say aggressive one more motherfucking time, bitch, I swear to God. So the next day... She and the girls are sitting around talking about the incident again because they so fixated on it. But meanwhile, OG and CC are the problem. But y'all stay with them hoes' names in y'all mouth. And they talking about the shit. And OG, uh, uh, what's her name? Evelyn said, I was wondering if Chad was in her DM. So I hit him up. And he said, no, because I got receipts. Um, the messages go all the way back to 2013. And basically, she says that he was... Uh, that she, I mean, OG was hitting him up, but he wasn't responding, and she was hitting him while she was with um, Kwame, and that she had just reached out to him a, a few weeks prior. My thing is, this nigga was so abusive, as you told him, you, he was so abusive, you were so afraid. He cracked you in your forehead. It was blood everywhere. I look like Harry Potter. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, where's the sorcerer's stone? <laughs> He's so, he was such a bad husband. Why are you reaching out to your abusive ass husband trying to find out whether he was DMing a bitch? Why does that big, and that's so much of a concern for you? Because once again, you butt her because you still love that nigga. And your card, your slip is showing, as Mariah said on uh, Married to Medicine. Your slip is showing, sis. Why are you so motherfucking pressed? You ain't been with this nigga in over 10 years. Why do you give a fuck about whether or not him and OG was talking? Because you mad. It's okay if you mad. Light skin. You mad because that chocolate bitch that you think is ugly. It's fucking with your nigga. And you trying to put two and two together because you feel like I look like this and she look like that. What the fuck? Oh, your feelings is hurt. Remember last week I told y'all ego and pride? Oh, ego and pride is a motherfucker, bitch. Ah. So, um, the girls laughing and shit because they feel like, oh, OG was playing herself. She was DMing him. He wasn't responding. I'm like, you stupid hoes really don't think that this nigga was uh, deleting messages. Hey! So Evelyn said that she's going to post the screenshots online and embarrass her. All right. Shiny. And then once again, though, 
OG's the aggressive, but your friend is over here acting like she in the third grade, like, like she in 11th grade and shit, posting messages and talking about posting messages and shit on social media, like she ain't a 40-something-year-old woman, like, all right, girl. So Shiny, Shiny sits down with Jackie and says that she want to do lunch, but that OG's threats aren't normal, and she's a liability. All right, Master Splinter. I thought you were supposed to be the Kung Fu King. <laughs> like, you was the ones that taught the Ninja Turtles. Why are you so mad at OG? So, Jackie and her confessional say, OG hasn't done anything yet. Where is Evelyn and Malaysia? When, are, when is Evelyn and Malaysia going to get their talking to? And I was like, I wish you would have said that to her actual face, Jackie, instead of just saying that in your confessional. Because who the fuck is Shiny? Who the fuck is that bitch? Because, see, I wouldn't last five minutes on that motherfucking show because I've been to slap the shit out of her. I've been to slap the shit out of her, Evelyn, Porkchop, Feeby, all them bitches would have caught these hands. I wouldn't last five minutes on that damn show. So, Shawnee says, I think Evelyn and Cece would have had words, but I never thought Evelyn was going to fight Cece. Like the lies just come out of your mouth that easy. I would never trust a bitch like you because the fact that you can pretend like your friend is this innocent is scary. But that meanwhile, they're trying to act like OG is so scary. You, Shiny is the scariest motherfucker on this damn show because the fact that she can with a straight face say out of her mouth that she never thought that Evelyn was going to fight that girl knowing damn well that was exactly what the fuck she was going to do is outright scary. The fact that your ass can lie that well and make it that believable because in your mind you really think that the shit that you saying is okay and like we as the viewers are dumb as fuck to go along with you you're crazy bitch and I'm afraid so um Shawnee uh, says, despite what comes out of our mouths, there's an underlining love there. I don't think you and Phoebe would ever steal on each other. Girl, get the fuck out of here, because you would have loved every five, every fucking moment if uh, Jackie or Phoebe would have left over that table at each other. You would have been like television gold. Girl, get out of here. So Jackie said, it would take a lot for me to hit someone. And Johnny say, I think OG would. I would love for you and Cece to go to lunch, but OG can't come. I'm looking out for people's safety. No, this bitch didn't. When your bestie, the one that threw a bottle, remember she tried to pull that knife out on Jennifer that one episode? She threw a drink of uh, water in Jennifer's face. She the one left over a table. Um, she threw that glass of water or that drink in that one girl face season one. Um, what else has she picked up? The bitch picks up something every time she uh, attempts to fight somebody because once again, we know Evelyn ain't got no motherfucking hands, bitch. That's why she always picking up something. But OG is the liability and you want to make sure that everyone's safe when your friend out here picking up bamboo sticks and motherfucking leaves and shit trying to hit bitches with them. Okay, girl. All right, we're going to play along. So, um... She says her threatening to break jaws is a reason. And you can tell her her threatening to break people's jaws is a reason why I don't want her to come. Girl, bye. Fuck you and that lunch. So, Billy D, Billy D, if you don't know, is Kristen ass. Billy D in that varicose vein of her titty. <laughs> Talk to Thomas. I'm so tired of seeing that little vein in that titty. You need to go get that shit checked out, bitch. So he tells her that um, he and Byron are trying to work on things, but there are some apologies that need to be made. And if she don't want to make up with her dad, with his daddy and CT, then that's fine. Ugh. So OG, Jackie, and Cece go to a hot spring and I loved OG's wig. That was the look for OG, bitch. That is the look for you. That is the hairstyle for you. That is the look for you. That looked great on OG. I love them curls. So Jackie tells them what Shiny said and OG said, I would have never tried to stop them from talking if Evelyn didn't have a stick in her hand trying to hit her in the back of her head. Cece said the fact that she was holding a bamboo stick because she think it's funny with her alien Yoda looking ass. Bitch, once again, Cece come through with the motherfucking read. I was like, Cece, I wish she was on this kind of level the whole motherfucking season, bitch. I love this CC. This CC bitch came from motherfucking Compton, bitch. Came from Oakland, bitch. I love this motherfucking CC. Y'all got CC fucked up. CC be giving you with the read. She said her alien Yoda looking ass, and that bitch looked just like Yoda. So Jackie, Google it if you don't know who the fuck Yoda is. Come from Star Wars. 
So Jackie tells OG she is invited for lunch because she's a liability. Cece say what? Because they're scared? OG say Evelyn is the common denominator. She always running with a bottle of the knife. She can catch a fade. And I was like, she sure the fuck can, my nigga. So Shani tells the girls that OG and them are at the hot springs. And Evelyn's like, where's the hot springs? I think we should go to the hot springs. But once again, you're going to sit up here and try to pretend like OG is the problem when your friend, once again, is going out of her way to go say something to somebody to... Um, start a fight, start an argument, to go out of her way to say something to a bitch, but OG is the problem. Y'all came over to bother her, and you went along with the shit, because you thought your friend had the upper hand and was about to embarrass her. But oh, bitch, once again, God triumphs, and the devil loses. <laughs> so, um, they go over there, and um, in her confessional, Evelyn says, you don't bring up my husband, and you don't fuck with me, you know, I'm going to make sure she wish she never opened up a Twitter account. And I was like, bitch, you're going to eat your words in like 5.2 seconds. So once again, shiny with the fuck shit. They go over there and OGC the set up. She's like, oh, okay, all oh, these bitches, you, you, you coming for me? Oh, bitch, here I go. <laughs> so Jackie say, you know, I ain't going to just get in this van and make it seem like they punking us. I'm going to go over there and see what they got to say. Cece said, of course, she ain't trying to even talk to them bitches. So her and OG go over like, what's up? So Evelyn pull out the DM and start to read them, thinking she doing something, thinking she doing a dictation in class and shit. And I was like, girl, if you don't get your stupid ass on somewhere, this bitch got a pencil and shit trying to pinpoint shit. And I'm like, girl, you old Alex Trebek looking ass nigga. So uh, OG said, oh, let me go get my text message since we pulling up Twitter. And those are deleted, by the way. I'll print out the real ones, the ones where he DM me first and follow me first. Okay. So Evelyn like, oh, okay, because she still thinks she got the upper hand now. She's like, okay, okay, you're having a conversation with yourself here, June 14th, and OG said, actually, we met 20, in 2011, and Evelyn look, she, them glasses kind of like, what'd you say, Willis? She was like, 20, nigga, we was together in 2011, what the fuck, what? That's when her whole Disrotation <laughs> went down. It was over. It was like a mud slide. This shit was over. Everybody should just walked away. Everybody calmed down. This shit was over at that point. She, every inch, I felt so bad for sis. I felt so bad for her. She just made herself look so fucking stupid. So, in her confessional, she say, Chad and I were engaged. We got married in 2012. So, are you just DMing a man that you know is about to be married? Um, yeah. Ain't called my motherfucker. Now you know how Tammy feels. <laughs> Look at God. What are you doing? So, OG say, Chad, that's my guy. <laughs> like, she, she loving this shit. She, Chad, that's my guy. Shit, where was this? Where did text you? And she said, okay, here we go. Ocho Cinco, January 4th, 2011. You're fine. Boyfriend, no. What about yourself? Well, I do deal with someone, but we could be BFFs. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Evelyn, <laughs> Evelyn looking stupid. She don't even know what to do with herself, but she got to continue to put on that face for the other bitches. So she say, would your nigga like to know that you're still DM him? Because now she ain't got nothing else now. This is her last card that she can pull. OG say, oh, he knows. <coughs> You thought you had something, did you? Oh, you thought you, you, you Bobby Weed motherfuckers, I'm about to come with that motherfucker. I'm about to write up the shit out of you, bitch. So Evelyn say, you can have Ocho. I had him. I was married to him. I, I didn't did all that. And so as she said that, she putting up her receipts because it's time to go now because ain't nothing else to talk about. She made a fool out of herself. OG coming with the real, real, real receipts and she realized that um, Chad once again has made her look like a fool and she didn't realize that this nigga was cheating with this gremlin looking bitch while he was a fucking me and then he gonna lie about the shit and got me looking stupid on national TV motherfuckers all around the world gonna see this shit what in the fuck this nigga that made me look stupid again I thought I was done with this nigga why do I keep on making myself look like a fool behind this motherfucker bitch because you love him girl <laughs> this shit is hilarious so um OG say, I don't want him. That's the difference between me and you. Chad wants to be with a black woman. You're not black. You can gel your hair down as much as you want. You can say, nigga this, nigga that, nigga this, nigga that. 
Kelly can't even say shit because the read is so real. And you know what the worst kind of read you can give to a bitch is a truthful read. Shit that's going to hit her down in her gut. Shit that's going to make her stay up and late at night and look up at the ceiling like, damn, is that really how people view me? God damn, I've been living in a motherfucking altering universe. Who the fuck am I? Do I even know myself, bitch? That's the type of read that uh, OG, OG gave her ass. She said, you can jail your hair down. You can say nigga this, nigga that, but you still ain't black, bitch, girl. None of the other girls, um, except Jackie, because Jackie Hucker Fish said no comment, understand why she bringing up the race car. They know why she bringing up the race car, but all them hoes want to play stupid. OG, her confessional said, Evelyn came to o Costa Rica with cornrows in her hair. I have sat at dinner and heard her use the N-word left and right, and it's disgusting. Hmm, sure the fuck is. Evelyn, her confessional said, I identify with being Afro-Latina, and bitch, I'm proud. Okay, girl. All right. So OG say, as many black dicks as you had in your pussy, you will never be black. You can buy titties again. You can buy a butt again. This shit here is generic, genetic, bitch. That bitch bent over and started shaking her ass. Evelyn couldn't do shit but back away slowly. <laughs> Out the room, she was moonwalking across the sand, bitch. Like, get me the fuck out of here. I done been landed in deep water, bitch. Shiny, this your motherfucking fault gonna let me text that nigga. What the fuck is wrong with you, bitch? Child. I'm shocked. So, Evelyn got a fake ass, too. I didn't know that. I knew she had her titties in, but I didn't know she bought a booty, too. Um, OG said, you better walk away. Shiny Thomas said, Jesus loves you, OG. Girl, if I was OG, I would have got out that motherfucking car and drop kicked that bitch. So who the fuck you talking to trying to be funny? You trying to stick up for your girl, but y'all y'all done got decimated at this point. Just tuck your dick in between your legs and go the fuck home. OG said, he sure do. Mm-hmm. So, OG, Jackie, and CeCe sit down back at the hotel. And OG said, you know, I had to let her know you can call me ugly all you want, but I had to let her know your nigga wanted me. Sure the fuck did. And I was like, yeah, bitch put your dick on the motherfucking table let these hoes know what's up because that's the only thing that Evelyn at that point can say about her is that she thinks that she's ugly she can't say she ain't got no man she can't say she ain't got no job she can't say she ain't got a good body she can't say nothing else about her that you quote unquote ugly but if I'm ugly then why the fuck your nigga want to be with me while he was engaged to your ass mm -hmm. okay end of conversation Jackie and her professional say she's crossing every line in every way nah bitch no she wouldn't she started I motherfucking finish it I don't give a fuck. You ain't gonna come to me crazy and think that I'm not gonna um, come at you equally as crazy. When you arguing the motherfucker ain't no motherfucking line, bitch. I'm going for the motherfucking juggler. I'm talking about your mama, your grandmama, your great grandmama, your ugly ass daddy, your granddaddy, your, your biological daddy, your deadbeat daddy, your ugly ass kids, your left ovaries, your left nutsack, bitch. I don't give a fuck. I'm going in. So every, um, every, uh, I mean, uh, Evelyn says to the girls, you, uh, she's a groupie. For you to keep texting all these years, because she's no, for you to keep text messages all these years is crazy. What doesn't, um, uh, what doesn't lie about the DMs that she keep on asking for the phone number? He didn't give it. OG said, You were, uh, you were so big mad that you had to call him and have him send you DMs. We're on a whole aisle. And I was like, Exactly. The fact that you took out the time on vacation to, Call your ex-husband that supposedly beat your ass to find out if he was fucking somebody else years ago says everything. And the fact that you're going to take said evidence down to a Kinko's while you in Costa Rica to get proof. Girl, you so tired and pressed. You was oppressed like a panini, bitch. So Evelyn says in her confessionals, an honest woman wouldn't text a soon-to-be married man. Well, ain't that the pot calling the kettle? OG say what hurts me once again is that Shawnee was telling me I'm the aggressor and once again wasn't holding her friend accountable. Evelyn was an easy kill for me today and I'm going to tell her you keep talking. I'm going to sizzle your soul from here to that goddamn volcano because I didn't even begin to read the real text message. And I believe that there was more to it, bitch. I believe that he was probably telling her me and Evelyn ain't even together like that. I don't even fuck with her like that or he uh, or me and her in the open relationship because remember he, he told her he wanted to fuck other women and she was like, well, as long as you tell me hmm, with your thirsty ass so um Jackie said oh gee there's more and OG said and I saved everything and I'll be more than happy to release them at any time Evelyn tells the girls we were together in 2011 y'all sure was he was fucking every bitch that he could Jackie tells calls Shiny and tells her she's sorry she ain't making it to the lunch they'll catch up in LA Jackie did sign across like oh god this is too much and OG trying uh 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 
OG says, transfer that prayer to Evelyn. You pray for your friend. And I'll join you too. And she get down on her knees and start praying. And she say, may she close her crotch and never open it again to a married to a man with a bag. And then CC Bessie ass join on the ground. And Jackie say, CC. And then OG say, Lord Jesus, may she close her crotch and keep her mouth shut, or I will break her jaw. Bitch, and the episode goes off. Child, this was a phenomenal season finale, bitch. OG and CC came through with the motherfucking L. Everybody else took a motherfucking W in this bitch. OG and CC are the real motherfucking MVPs. Back to pack, back to back motherfucking grand slams up in this bitch. CC got them last week. OG came through with the motherfucking clutch, bitch, and followed up with the alley oop. Bitch, this was everything. This was everything. It is so good when you see a bitch or a bully get their karmic retribution. And Evelyn got it not once, not twice, but three times. She made herself look like a fool three times behind the same two bitches. I know she at home in a fetal position right now. She in a, at home in a fetal position holding Leo rock, <laughs> rocking back and forth because she made a fool out of herself. I'm letting y'all know right now, I will not be watching the motherfucking reunion next week. Ain't no point. I'm not going to support this shit. I probably won't even fucking watch it. I'm not doing no review on this shit. Fuck them hoes. I don't even know if I'm going to do reviews next year. I know y'all love this shit, but I just cannot support Shawnee. I cannot. Like she is, She disgusts me. She flat out disgusts me. It sickens me to my stomach to see the behaviors on this show with these women. Um, the favoritism that's being shown, the bullying tax and the exclusion of certain women, the, 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 the dismissal of certain people's actions and behaviors. It's just like, what in the, like, it's just like, what the fuck am I watching? Like, I can't even support this bullshit. Like, how can you support this? And I, it's sad because it's black women. Well, not Evelyn, but to see Shani, a black woman, being so cutthroat and nasty you gonna go this far for a buck really girl like i feel sorry for your soul because it's murky up in there bitch you your ooh, your energy is your vibe is just ooh, all wrong i don't know if i can continue to support that because this this was trifling this was trifling trifling as fuck to watch um i wish cc and og the best um the T is that OG and CC and Phoebe will not be back next season. Kristen is on the fence. Um, yeah, I'm just over it. I'm just over it. Like, it's just, this is a, just a foul show. It's just foul. I'm happy for Tammy and everything that she has going on. I can give a shit about anybody else on this show. Fuck every last one of them raggedy bitches. Um, may they not get AARP. Like, <laughs> fuck them hoes. Fuck them hoes. Fuck them hoes. Fuck them hoes. I have never watched a reality show that was more vile in my life. That was more ratchet in my life. It was it's just, it's just, it was, uh, I just cannot with them bitches. But tonight and last week's episode were A plus because we saw the underdogs come out on top. I feel like I was watching uh, one of the nerds movies from back in the day. Like, it was it was it was beautiful. It was beautiful because once again, God don't fucking like ugly. He don't. He fucking don't. And the devil might think that he be winning, but God always come through in the motherfucking clutch. Cause Evelyn and Shiny bitch are Lucifer, are walking forms of a demon seed bitch. And I'll take that shit to my motherfucking grave. Thank y'all for watching my reviews this season. For all of the subscribers that have subscribed to my channel because of these Basketball Wise reviews, thank you for every comment, for every thumbs up. I appreciate it. We gonna see if I do re uh, reviews next year. Uh, maybe a year from now, I, I'm my spirit to feel better. But this shit, it's just, it takes a lot. Like, no other reality show affects me the way that Basketball Wise does, because it's just sad and pathetic to see women really act like this. And you know, I could see if it was scripted, but none of this shit is scripted. And I think that's what pisses me off even more because this is real life and real behaviors. This is not shit that they reading off a script like on Black Ink Crew or Love and Hip Hop. These bitches are really acting like this. And I think that's what makes it even more disgusting and hard to stomach to watch. So for the last time this season, let's talk down below. Let me know what y'all thought about tonight's episode. How do y'all feel about moving forward with basketball wives? Let's talk down below. Should I do reviews next season? 
Let's talk, you guys. Once again, I will not be doing reviews on the reunion. I love you guys. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell button to so you know when my videos drop. And cop you some motherfucking merch. Get you all T-all shade shirt, a T-squad shirt. It's right down here at the bottom. Follow me on social media. All of my information is down below. Love you guys. Bye.